Israeli army officials said Sunday they are continuing what they are calling a limited military engagement into the southern city of Rafah. But as Israel pushes deeper into Rafah, Hamas fighters are regrouping elsewhere in an ungoverned Gaza. AP correspondent Karen Chamas has more. Israeli military footage showed Israeli soldiers shooting in northern Gaza as it also moved deeper into the southern town of Rafah. Israel continues to push into the town despite objections from the U.S. and the rest of the international community. 300,000 people have fled Rafa on evacuation orders from Israel. The UN humanitarian chief Volker Turk said, So where should they go now? There is no safe place in Gaza. The latest move has also prompted Egypt to announce it would be joining South Africa at a UN top court to allege Israel is committing genocide in Gaza. While Israel rejects the claim, Egypt released a statement citing the worsening severity and scope of the Israeli attacks against Palestinian civilians. I'm Karen Chamas. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken reiterated U.S. opposition to a major military assault on Rafah, telling the U.S. NBC News program Meet the Press Sunday that Israel is on a trajectory toward potentially inheriting an insurgency with many armed Hamas left without an exit from Gaza and a post-war governance plan. Blinken urged both sides on the conflict to continue, continue pursuing a ceasefire agreement. It remains our view that the fastest way to get to a ceasefire, the fastest way to get hostages home, is through an agreement, and we're determined every single day to pursue that uh, and to try to get it to happen. Officials in Afghanistan said Sunday the death toll from Friday's flash floods in the northern Baglan province has risen to more than 315, with more than 1,600 people injured. The refugee ministry announced the latest casualties through, a so, through the social, uh, social media. It said more than 2,600 homes have been completely or partially destroyed. This is VOA News. Former U.S. President Donald Trump's hush money trial will continue in New York this week, and former Trump attorney Michael Cohn is expected to testify. Associated Press correspondent Eric Tucker, who is covering the trial, explains why Cohen is such a crucial witness in the case. He is Donald Trump's former lawyer and personal fixer, and he matters here because he made a $130,000 payment to porn actor Stormy Daniels during the 2016 presidential campaign to buy her silence about an extramarital sexual encounter that she says she had with Trump a decade earlier. Cohen was then reimbursed by Trump, and this is where prosecutors say the crime occurred. That's AP correspondent Eric Tucker reporting. The first recipient of a genetically modified pig kidney transplant has died nearly two months after he underwent the procedure. Rick, Cl- Rick Slayman was the, was the patient there. AP correspondent Julie Walker reports. Doctors at Massachusetts General Hospital did the procedure in March. The hospital's transplant team says it's deeply saddened and there is no indication the 62-year-old died as a result of the transplant. Slayman's family thanked them, saying their efforts gave them seven more weeks with him. Previously, pig kidneys had been temporarily transplanted into brain-dead donors. Two men received heart transplants from pigs, although both died within months. I'm Julie Walker. Heavy rains and torrents of cold lava and mud flowing down a volcano slopes on Indonesia's Sumatra Island have triggered flash floods that killed at least 15 people and injured several others. Monsoon rains and major mudslides from a cold lava flow on Mount Merapi caused a river to breach its banks and tear through mountainside villages in the West Sumatra province just before midnight Saturday. The flood swept away people and submerged more than 100 houses and buildings. Cold lava, also known as, known as lahar, is a mixture of volcanic material and pebbles that flow down a volcano slopes in the rain. U.S. comedian Jerry Seinfeld addressed graduating students at Duke University Sunday in the southeastern U.S. state of North Carolina and made an impassioned plea for them to maintain their senses of humor throughout life. Videos of the event posted on social media show dozens of students walking out of the ceremony in protest of Seinfeld being guest speaker due to his support for Israel through the war in Gaza. Undeterred, Seinfeld told the students he admired their ambitions in gener- and their gen- of their generation to create a more just and inclusive society and that they cared so much about not offending others. But, all caps, but, what I need to tell you as a comedian, do not lose your sense of humor. You can have no idea at this point in your life how much you are going to need it to get through. Not enough of life makes sense for you to be able to survive it without humor.
Thank you for watching. Can you do me a favor? Please leave a comment in the comment section below. That would really help. Thank you and see you again soon.